Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 51 where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net that's m-s-a-r-g-e-n-t 23 at comcast.net let's just get right to it this first one is called They Hide God Dear Mark, my name is Milan I've just seen your video on YouTube and I need to tell you that you did a very good job. Congratulations. All what you said there, I believe it's truth and I did my research for past couple of years and there is no doubt about it. The only thing that I'm confused with is presented from 126 about previous civilizations who tries to build stairway to heaven and did they really dug our earth for material for it of it was someone else i'm reading this verbatim by the way uh, i just called your phone number but i didn't leave a message the call was from dubai where i live i would like to talk to you on skype if possible if you have time to clarify some things for me and get to some new clues together possibly my name and he gave me his email address all the best milan uh, about previous civilizations. I will have to write him back and, and have him clarify on his side as well. This one is called, wow, love your website. Mark, we are newbies, but are researching and studying. Discovered your website and YouTube channel and are devouring. Thanks for all you post. We are watching an episode of CSI Miami from 2009. And at the end, they played a song called Two to One by Imogen Heap. Enclosed as a YouTube link. Yeah, it's a great song, Imogen. I-M-O-G-E-N space H-E-A-P. Uh, the opening line is, first the earth was flat. It's a fantastic song. So if you guys get a chance, uh, check it out. It's also on, uh, I use it as some of my trailer stuff. Awesome. Thank you, Carol. This one's called Antarctica. Mark, why doesn't someone try a private expedition to sneak to the interior of the island or outer edge? That's from Liam. Uh, Liam, it's, how about the Antarctic Defense Force? How about the fact that they've locked that sucker down for... They've, they've had basically a 60-year head start. No one's going down there without a whole bunch of permits. Remember, you need permits from multiple companies to pull... Or, I'm sorry, multiple countries to pull that off. So, yeah, I don't think an Antarctic expedition is going to happen anytime soon. Plus, remember, you're going to be... the From what we know, the GPS system doesn't even work down there. So how are you going to navigate it? And how would you know where you were? Remember, Admiral Byrd was traveling around by plane for 30 years. Didn't find anything. This one's called No Globe Stuff. Mark, my name is Judy Boyer, and my husband and I have been flat earthers since late 2015. We watch you frequently and are big fans. I am retired, but spend some time creating jewelry and bags. Early this year, I was inspired to create a line of flat earth related items. One thing that struck me was that Antarctica, as we see it on the globe, is incorrect. So I designed and had printed no Antarctica fabric. It incorporates the ubiquitous red circle and backslash, the no symbol or bro prohibition sign. This has become the basis for my new Etsy shop called No Globe under the pseudonym Dravel Griveway. Oh, that's a great name, Dravel Griveway. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, you can find it here, and there's an Etsy shop link. You There you'll find earrings and bags. A couple more things will come later. I would like to send you a gift from that site, a tote perhaps. Check it out, and your selection can be in the mail the next day. It would be great to see a no-globe item on YouTube. I have another Etsy shop at Judy's Avocation for Vintage and Judy's Avocation for Handmade Items. We will be at the fall conference and are really looking forward to visiting with like-minded people thanks for all you do judy boyer holy smokes it took me this long to read this email i should have read this a long time i'm gonna put that in my things to do pile right over there this one's called people ignore their facts that contradict beliefs uh it's from larry larry it's a little big it's like four pages long but, but thank you so much for that, uh, for, for sending that. Just so you guys know, if you send something that's really, really long, I, I try to keep a, you know, a couple paragraphs, maybe five or six tops. But if you send three or four pages, chances are I'm not going to be able to read it on the show. I will glance at it. But as you know, I get pretty much an unlimited supply of emails. And right now I'm still going through, what is this, September? Oh, man, I'm two months behind. I'm, I'm slowly, slowly losing ground. 
All right, uh, this one's called, Hi Mark, is that a reflection in the dome or letters? Hi Mark, I'm a flat earther and just got some proof of letters in the firmament from a high altitude balloon video. When touching the dome and the balloon bursts, camera tilts and in one frame you can see letters or, reflect, or a reflection. Here's the link and it's at official flat earth and globe discussion. Uh, of the post in a 72k group in Facebook, which is met very skeptical from all trolls and globers. Please check it out if you have time. Thanks in advance. Best regards, Andre Andrev. Cool firmament letters. And if I'm looking at it real quick, eh, maybe, yeah, possibly, sure. This one's called consciousness. Hi, Mark. I like where you're going with the fool delusions, easy to spot thing. Maybe you could show studies where people were able to be convinced of something ridiculous or do it to the audience. I believe one or two small areas can be spoken about a little more and would give you some fresh material for the conference. Uh, well, since you talk to people, you should do like a collage of initial mind melting, <laughs> mind melting, wormhole emotional moments. Start collecting people's emotional journeys. Me personally, it feels right. Now I feel at peace and it feels like I can basket all that science up in one go. All garbage. You should dive real deep into, okay, picture this, you are doing your presentation. You bring up on the screen the year 2017, two timelines. What would the society power structure look like if they did not deceive us with the globe? The government would not have a leg to stand on if all people knew the earth was flat. There would be unbreakable conviction of spirit that God is our only business. The religions would rule the world absolutely, not the governments. God consciousness would rule. The shape of the world would remind us of God. A flat earth reminds us of a creator. A globe earth helps us forget the creator. In this void, governments have stepped. Stepped? Also another aspect is the governments would be so weak. They would not be allowed to be the rulers as we know God is the ruler. Anyone born with a gift to bring us to him also. They would be put into their place as public servants only. No evolution, big bang. And if people were convinced of all that is that a God entails, they would be more conscious of their actions. See flat earth as a remedy for tyranny. The human spirit becomes unbeatably powerful when it is aligned with God in spiritual essence. Globe earth has to follow matter only, even though a matter only universe could not, cannot expand under its own power as Newton's first law states, matter is inert. Research Newton's laws, do not be tricked, just think of all matter when you read them. And that's from Dave. Thanks, Dave. Well said. Uh, let's see here. Moving on, let's do, this one's called Terence McKenna quote. Mark, we know a lot less than we assume we know. If someone tells you that we live around a typical star at the edge of a typical galaxy strewn through a mega space trillions of times larger, I mean, they don't know what they're talking about. That's just the cheerful assurance of modern astronomy, based on a bunch of fishing formulas that were cooked up within the confines of the 20th century. The stars that shine down at night could be painted dots on a scrim for all we know. And that's actually, that whole thing was a, a quote from Terence McKenna, one of the guys that I, I really like tying to Flat Earth now because he came up with Time Wave Zero. And he said that novelty would run out in 2012 and perhaps the world would end. The world did not end, but I do believe that, that novelty uh, disappeared, just went buried itself into the ground in 2012. Interesting stuff. This one's called Flat Earth Clues. Hello, Mr. Sargent. I have listened to all your interviews and watched your videos. In one of your interviews, you mentioned your theory of the moon being a hologram of sorts. I was never very religious until the flat earth became my reality. So as I read the Bible more, it never... Wait a minute. It seemed to make sense. The Bible says God is the creator of the sun, moon, as well as the earth. My question is, what are your thoughts on hologram versus firmament? I've seen the videos you mentioned about the hologram doing a reset and lines or what look like tuning from the bottom of the moon works its way up and appears to do a reset. 
Could it be water or liquid that is moving around that gives the illusion of resetting? According to the Bible, we are enclosed in a system separated by the firmament. So outside the firmament would be water surrounding the sun and moon. Have you thought about this theory? Yes, I I have. If so, why why did you rule it out? I didn't rule it out. It's it's something it's, it's an option that's out there, but I didn't rule it out. When the United States and Russia started Operation Fishbowl, they shot hundreds of missiles straight up. I don't know if it was hundreds. I believe, I believe this when they realized our world was not what we've all been told. My theory is they hit the firmament. I would love your thoughts on this and as to why you would rule out liquid theory. No, I, I don't rule it out. And why and how the moon is controlled by whom and the technology. Do you ever hold any seminars? Would you in the future? I look forward to hearing from you as well as seeing more of your work. Thank you, Danielle. Oh, you're very welcome, Danielle. And I, I, I don't necessarily call them seminars. I call them Q&A sessions, basically, I, where I've gone to other cities and talked to people. Mostly, most people have questions. Anybody that gets into the flat earth for the first time, they just have a ton of questions, as a lot of you know. And I just got back from the national conference. Hopefully you heard about it by the time I read your email. And again, sorry it takes me so long to read these. It's just that I've been very, very busy. This one's called Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, Sean here. How you doing? Just want to say you're doing an absolutely amazing job, brother. I am a conspiracy dude like yourself. Followed David Icke's info for over nearly 20 years now. But when I learned about the flat earth, I couldn't believe how deep the conspiracy went. I am absolutely convinced it's flat and still can't believe the lie that we are all being told. I just want to say a very, very big thank you to you and all the research you have done and time you have spent to get the message out there. I am trying to do the same now. Man, it is a mu- <laughs> Yeah, I, I get you. He was using a little profanity there. I am sure you know what I mean when I say that. But at the same time, I feel totally free by knowing the truth. I am based in South Africa, Cape Town, and always wondered about the fight flights. Now it totally makes sense. Thanks again for all you've done, and I have been re-listening to They Hide God with the Biggest Lie Ever. Very, very cool information, man. Respect and a big hug from the heart. Keep up the good work, bro. Here's to freedom and love from the heart. It's like coming home. If you ever come to Cape Town, please give me a shout. I'd like to meet you. All the best, Sean Thompson. Very welcome. This one's called Satellites versus Moon Gravity. Hey, Mark, if the moon is causing the tides, shouldn't it also be tugging on those geostationary satellites? If those things move an inch, satellite TV dishes would have to be repointed. That's from Mike Hord in Atlanta. I, that's a good point. Nobody's ever brought that up. Why isn't the tidal force from the moon affecting satellites? If it can affect massive oceans, shouldn't it be messing with the satellites a little bit? Good one. Never heard that. I'm going to have to bring that up to some people. This one's called Google Earth. Somebody sent me a link. Google Earth lead developer believes the world is flat. Uh, just so you know, who sent, who sent me that? That was from Bruce. Bruce, I think that's a fake story. I, I Because one, I don't think Google Earth even has a lead developer. It'd be a massive team of people working on that thing. And uh, no, I, that, that story didn't get any traction. In fact, the original story was from uh some small site it would never picked get picked up by anybody else so i don't believe that story this one's called the moral nature of the creators hi mark i hope this message finds you well and happy a theological question popped up in my mind and i would like to receive your opinion if you would be so kind you have said several important things about the creators engineers designers simulators or whoever put the flat domed earth together the biblical creator is said to be all good, and when he created the world, he pronounced it good as well. However, there are some moral discrepancies that seem to be applicable to the Flat Earth designers. One discrepancy is exemplified by the star display in or on the firmament, which you have suggested may be an illusion similar to the illusory, 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 don't use that word much, heavens that are projected on the ceiling of a planetarium. My question concerns the morality of such a creative action. Why would good engineers deliberately create a display that is really an illusion and therefore is a deception and a lie? What's in it for them? What do they intend for us and how do they regard us? That they would trick our senses and confound our astronomical efforts? Granted, in both cases, the stars are a lie. The clear night sky only displays ancient light. 
It takes starlight so long to travel to Earth that we are unable to see most stars just as they are. We can only see them as they were. Thus, seeing starlight is, ironically, looking into the past, the present, in, in the present. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. In the past, in the present. So even the natural stars are deceptive. But even more so would be artificial stars who, whose only apparent purpose is to give us a false notion of the universe and the world that surrounds us. Why would the engineers do this? <laughs> he's, he's getting locked into a rut here. Beyond the initial issue of deception, surely the very advanced engineers would have been able to predict that one day humankind would discover the ruse and thus, in that narrow sense at least, achieve equality with us, with a capital U on the us, to indicate the parallel between Yahweh and his angelic counsel's reaction to Adam and Eve's eating of the tree of knowledge. The situations would be very similar. What are your thoughts on the possible ethics of the flat earth designers? Do you see a moral problem with their deceptions? Um, no. <laughs> don't no i don't i believe we were supposed to be discovered so if it's a deception that is initially the design to be discovered is it truly a long-term deception or is it a teaching tool more than anything else i mean we learn lots of things in school and lots of information is hidden from us deliberately in advanced books and it takes us a while to, to get there but you know we'll, we'll get to that another time do you think they did this for our own good that is they might actually want us to rediscover uh, or discover the ruse and then attempt to steal fire from heaven, a rebellious act that might result in a new maturity for humankind. Yes, I do. And he, I just said that. So he, he and I are now on the same page. You once suggested that the Bible's Tower of Babel incident might have represented exactly the kind of revolt that I am talking about. But the result of that ancient attempt to reach heaven was its utter destruction by heaven's de denizens. Would they repeat that punitive action if modern humans tried to penetrate the ruse and behold the engineers firsthand and personally. Does our own capacity to understand the nature of the world equate to a high risk factor which might entail the wrath of engineers who fear discovery by and direct contact with human beings? Anyway, thanks for taking the time to read my message. Should you read it on the show, my last name is pronounced Bastash, like mustache. Warm regards. Hang on. Steve Bastesh. Cool. Thanks, Steve. And lots of really great questions there. And hopefully, because this was sent also in September, you are further along. If you still still need more clarification after going through a whole bunch more content on YouTube, by all means, reach out to me again. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I have watched a compilation of your reasoning and findings. So could you give me a rundown on what exactly you think is going on at the North Pole and or how you feel about it? If the biblical and ancient accounts of the flat earth is true, then we must be prepared to accept. They also stated the underworld where many things are happening. They say from a spiritual and physical standpoint are very real and happening down there. RN. I don't know if you're a Christian, but I am. And when I was very young, found this inconsistency. And I was only about 12 when I realized they are showing us the world as a globe, but the Bible says it's an upward cylinder with four points for the angels to govern over the parts. When I draw it out in my head, that is weird. Also, is there some secret society you are a part of that isn't all demonic and occultish and stuff or group? I would very much like to be invited or know more or pretty much everything, all caps. I can about this theory and the info behind it. Thank you for reading this, Mr. Sergeant, sent by Mr. Green. Uh, even though his email is a little bit different than that, I'm not going to tell you what that is. Um, th I, wait, I, you know, I'm just going to answer the last part. Is there some secret society that you're a part of? Well, if, if there was, I wouldn't be able to tell you. How's that? That's why they call it a secret. Okay, this one's called Southern Hemisphere flights hi mark i love the flat earth clues who wouldn't oh that's awfully nice actually maybe a lot of people but i love it i live in new zealand and i know a bunch of people who have flown direct to and from buenos aires it takes about 10 and a half hours i have to say i was rather disappointed when they did still i can't put my hand on my heart and say the earth is a globe just on account of that yeah, you and me both everything else points to the flat earth model maybe the flat earth map needs more attention Unless you still think those flights are non-existent, I would suggest redacting that section from the video as it undermines the rest, which is brilliant. 
Uh, you know, that's why I made Clue 9 and, and left Clue 7 in there and actually worked out quite well. What's amusing is that my wife is a BBC journalist and as such won't hear a bar of my batshit crazy carry-ons. So I'm going to launch a HAB with the help of, what's an HAB? With the help of a few friends, one of which is a professional photographer and the other is a physics professor at Auckland University. Now that the chips are down, my wife is thinking it might be a good documentary. If it comes off, no doubt it will come across your dial sooner or later. Onwards and upwards, best regards, Toby. Thank you, Toby. It's awesome. This one's called No Subject. Hi, Sarge. I don't get called Sarge that much nowadays. I used to in high school. I've recently come across some videos on YouTube about the Flat Earth and have been amazed about what I have watched. I am shocked that what I have learned from these videos was op has opened my mind to the possibility I, like the majority of the public, believe the Earth was a sphere and that we were floating in space, orbiting the sun along with the other planets, which left me with a feeling of helplessness in the sense that we were vulnerable he spelled vulnerable wrong to meteor strikes collisions and a so-called planet x which i'm not sure if it's a hoax or not and the possible threat of an alien invasion which again i'm not sure if they even exist or not so i'm writing an acceptance to the fact that the earth is flat as from what i've seen on these videos that explain to a degree in depth explanation of the earth being flat and also the research into nasa's fake moon landing and fake pictures of the earth and like you have pointed out in your two hour presentation regarding the flat earth that Hollywood does more than remake of a popular film, but has only done one movie based on the move moon, which doesn't even show the landing whatsoever. I myself haven't done any research on a flat earth, but I'm convinced that it is. I'm from New Zealand. And the other day I saw the moon in the same time in the daytime, but I've seen this on many occasions, but didn't think anything of it until I started watching these presentations on the flat earth, which I'm hooked on. Anyway, Sarge, I've taken up enough of your time with my revelation, and I'm sure there's others that have been awakened that would like to know more. Keep up the good work. We need more proof to make people question the globe theory. Regards, uh, Blazing Fire 45. Very welcome, Blazing. This one's called Flat Earth Question. Mark, just listen to the podcast on Mysterious Radio in which you were a guest. It was riveting. I have a couple of questions for you, if you could help enlighten me. How does the Flat Earth tie into the underground cities like under the Denver airport? Are these people in the know? Hard to say. There's a lot of different secret groups out there, a lot of secret military groups. Uh, if you're going to ask about the underground Denver airport, why don't you ask about Area 51? Does everybody at Area 51 have to know about flat earth no they don't they have to know about their own secret projects and what they're working on but flat earth is too big for most of the population even if you're secret military just saying uh, the nazis under hitler did extensive antarctic exploration and the u.s sent fleets down there the theory is that they were going to start a new society there did they find the barrier uh did the nazis find it yeah maybe sure why not it was in the 40s they would they had a couple year head start uh, but Admiral Byrd had already done some missions down there. Did they build on some of his work? I, I don't know. Uh, and what was Operation High Jump top tied to the removal of the final Nazi forces in 1946? Maybe, maybe, maybe it's, it's a good guess anyway. My biggest question is about gravity and light the laser beam test. If I'm not mistaken, gravity can bend light. Ooh, can it now? You have to show me that. Water can also reflect a laser. This much is true, yes. This is my hang-up. If the Earth were flat, why are lighthouses so tall? Couldn't you see a lighthouse the same if it were 10 feet versus 150 feet? The answer to that question is no, because you have to take into account the sea swells. Because if the oceans are really, really stormy, you can get waves that are very, very high, in which case they would block out the, the lighthouse a lot and you need the lighthouse during storm conditions more than anything else that's why they're so tall it's for it's for wave conditions and sea spray and everything else need some help trying to be open-minded on my quest for truth perhaps you could explain a bit more to me just try to brian and that's from brian thanks for that this one's called video Hi, Mark. I am just in the middle of watching your Under the Dome documentary on YouTube. Just wanted to say how good it is. This is one conspiracy topic I have always avoided, always thinking it's too far-fetched, but this is opening my eyes big time. 
Thanks for such great work, Debbie. Very welcome, Debbie. Even though Under the Dome documentary is officially not on my channel, and neither is They Are Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever, I do appreciate the people that made it. I've never actually talked to those guys, by the way. Uh, let's see, this one's called Under the Dome. <laughs> I'm just talking about Under the Dome. Good morning, Mark. I'm working through your YouTube documentary. I very much appreciate all the work you put into it. It is extremely well done. I'm in Colorado native. I live in the Denver Tech Center area. Saw your Denver area code and assume you can't be too far away. Oh, but you're wrong because I'm, I'm not in Boulder anymore. I am up in Seattle. I have a few questions in regards to the Flat Earth Hypothesis. I have been researching it for a while, see multiple documentaries, and learned a lot about NASA and trying to get the real history. There are a lot of flaws and deceptions that are being exposed. The more time goes by, people wake up, and more questions get asked. I feel bad for Neil Armstrong, Buzz, and Edward Collins. They were patriots during the Cold War, doing what they had to do in the face of Russia, which obviously had a far more advanced space program. You can see the guilt all over their faces and inconsistencies and errors in their stories. I tend to believe more and more that NASA is one of the biggest frauds. There does seem to offer enough support to warrant far more research. Question that still intrigues me is why when the astronauts are on the ISS, don't they ever look away from the Earth into outer space? Huh. It makes no sense. It's good. Still, I have questions I hope you can help me with. What explains the variations of time and day with regard to the seasons changing? Also, is there any explanation of solar and lunar eclipses? The ability to control the weather. I've seen a lot of the scientific experiments where it shows that the Earth is flat for hundreds of miles, which is scientifically impossible if there is a curve. One thing I had started to debunk, as it, is, as it does seem to be possible to fly from South America to Australia nonstop, the same thing goes for Africa to Australia. The flights are more expensive, but possible. But of course, nothing gets close to Antarctica. Thanks for your time and your efforts to spread awareness. I hope you're still doing this and trying to learn the truth about the world we live in. I will look for more information from you. Have a great day, John Orr. Spelled O-R-R. This one's called Flat Earth Questions. Mark, hi, I watched your video under the dome on YouTube. I'm very new to the flat earth theory, but I keep an open mind and, a, and am aware of a lot of other deceptions in governments, so nothing would surprise me even if it was flat. I have one main question to ask if you don't mind answering. Why would you have to go to Antarctica to find the edge? Why can't you sail to a different point of Earth to find it? This is confusing to me at the moment. Thanks. And that's from Wayne. Uh, the answer, Wayne, is because Antarctica is all around you. So yes, you, you still eventually will have to do that, like what the government's been doing for the last 60 years. But they've been keeping everything under wraps. But yeah, Antarctica, no matter which direction you, you take off from, from the center of our flat world, uh, you make it to the coastline of Antarctica. Antarctica is much, much bigger. This one's called Critical Mass. Mark, I've had a polar AE map decal in the back window of my SUV for four months and no reaction from motorists until today. Two different vehicles honked at me and the occupants, occupants made a horizontal arm, arm type gesture or wave to me. It's on. Regards, Lane. Absolutely, Lane. There's a lot of flat earthers out there. You just don't know who they are. In fact, I guarantee you walk next to a flat earther every day at some point. One day we'll all get, get, get together. When that day will be, I don't know. Soon. This one's called Flat Earth Has Ruined My Husband. Ooh, this, this could be fun. Mark, I am so disappointed in your show and content. Oh, I'm liking this. I'm going to get a drink of lemonade just, just for this email. Hang on. Okay. One of these days, I'm going to spill it on my microphone. I'm using a new microphone, by the way, if you guys haven't figured that out. Uh, it was sent to me by Chris Pontius. I'll show it off in Patricia's show on Wednesday. Okay. I honestly don't really care what you believe about the earth or government or anything. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're wrong. What I do care about is that my husband has become literally obsessed with everything flat earth in the past nine months and is making life hell. Since he's become obsessed, he has become the most angry, bitter, sarcastic, abusive person. I don't even recognize my husband anymore. He screams and yells at anyone who doesn't believe in flat earth. He mocks and belittles everyone and everything. Our marriage is suffering. 
His relationship with his family has deteriorated. I had to leave the house with our 18-month-old daughter numerous times because of his behavior and rants about Flat Earth. I have to keep an emergency bag in the car. <laughs> Come on. At all times because I don't know if someone will, someone will say or do something about round earth to set him off. I've been thrown on the floor because of flat earth. It's like literally or, or figuratively. He is a completely different person. And it always comes back to what an idiot I am because I said the word gravity or used Google Maps. And you can read this and say all you want about obviously he had or has others other problems if this is how he is. I don't care. I know he was not this way before his obsession with Flat Earth. I've listened to the videos and podcasts. Have no choice. It's always on. Literally always. The sarcasm. I'm sorry. The sarcasm. The mocking. The distrust of all authority. It all feeds into his mindset. He won't go to church anymore. He says this is biblical and he knows more about the Bible. This obsession is full on demonic. Either the position is or just his obsession. This is become his God, and I'm devastated. I don't care if you respond. I just want you to know. Melissa from Minnesota. Hmm. I wonder if I should respond to her. I wonder if this is a real... One, I wonder if it's real at all. And it looks like a real email. Let's take a quick look. Uh, if I say reply to this. Hmm. Yeah. Looks like it could be a uh, real email. You know what? I'm going to respond to her. And uh, see what I can dig up. Maybe maybe she'll have a follow up, because it was a couple months ago. This one is called. Uh, what's this called? Shoot, sorry about that. New to flatter theory. Hi Mark, I watched all of your videos and I loved them. They were really well made and brought me to think and wonder. Well done. After having to basically unlearn what I had learned on so many topics lately, I find myself starting to enjoy life more and think more. I feel like for so long I was, along with many others, just milling around life, barely noticing anything. All of this discovery, questions, and research has made me feel like a little kid again. It's so cool. Smiley face. I've really recently watched a really well-made story about the Anunnaki. Not sure what your view or thoughts are on the topic, but it's a cool series of YouTube videos regardless. The music is rad. Really? Rad? And the animation is old school. Reminds me of my youth. I have included the link if you feel so inclined. After watching yours, this immediately popped in my head, and I wondered if the story of our makers, the Anunnaki, are the ones who made the domed flat earth we live on and are basically letting us kill or love each other depending on how you look at it as they don't have too much use for us anymore or really the planet. Like my husband said, we're on a petri dish. Anyhow, thanks for the great info. I'm getting lost now searching all this stuff out and I love it. Take care, enjoy the vids if you watch them, Julie. And she sent a link, that's nice. Thank you, Julie, It's great. This one's called, I suppose you've heard of the Orville. Uh, Mark, in the third episode, if the stars should appear, which you can watch on their official site linked below, the crew finds a bio ship with a large dome filled with people who don't know they're in a ship. It's very Truman Show. I recommend checking it out. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has sent you the message about this show. And that's from Darren in La Crosse, Wisconsin. We're at a family union back in 1993. That's where my family's from originally. Uh, it was La Crosse, Wisconsin. They came, uh, they went to Germany, which used to be Prussia, to La Crosse. And then uh, quite a few of them went from La Crosse to Seattle. So thanks for that. And yeah, I have watched that episode and it's very interesting. I'm not a huge fan of Oroville because it's it doesn't seem to quite find, it, to know what it wants to do. Whether it wants to be a hardcore comedy or it wants to be a Star Trek parody, because that's really what it is. I mean, if you remember the movie Galaxy Quest, it's just another version of that, where, I mean, it's a complete Star Trek ripoff. And, but that episode was very, very interesting about a ship of people living inside a domed structure, and they didn't know they were in a spaceship. Heck, we could be in a spaceship. Just saying. This one's called the Deep Space Network. Hi, Mark. I have heard you question how the Mars rover's batteries and reception work so long and over great distances. I do too and wondered even when I still believed in the globe. So I looked into the DSN, which seems to have three huge dishes, which can amplify a cosmic whisper by orders of magnitude. However, the website is not very impressive. 
It looks like it came from some school project. The dishes could just be bouncing signals off the firmament. So I was wondering what you thought about this network. And this is the site. And it's from deepspace.jpl.nasa.gov. Best regards, Zoltan. That's a great name, Zoltan. Uh, no, I have not looked at it, but I, I will look at it when I get a chance. But yeah, every look, every anything they say they've got on another world or another body, uh, like the moon or Mars or Jupiter, whatever, an asteroid, it's a bunch of crap. It's all just the worst production value. It's terrible. This one's called Slideshow. Hi, Mark. Hope you are well. Here's another little video you might like to include in one of your slideshows. This time, it's Flat Earth Pin Button Badges. Great response from the Sky Dome video you included last time. Flat Earth is moving forward fast. Best wishes to you, GP Gardner, and from rflatearth.com. And I am sorry it took me so long to even look at this thing. I will absolutely mirror it on my channel when I get a chance. Thank you for that. This one's called Questions. Hi, Mark. After spending almost 30 years in the United States, I returned to France recently and at the same time discovered Flat Earth. What a trip it has been. I have two questions for you in an attempt to spread the word. One, how did you life change? How did your, okay. how did your life change since discovering Flat Earth? Uh, in every way you could possibly think of. Uh, every Seriously, the, the friends... Uh, I was hanging out with my family, the emails I was receiving, the phone calls I was receiving. I do flat earth all the time now. I'm, I'm not even really the same person anymore. I've be, I, I don't judge nearly as much as I used to. I'm not negative towards really anybody. I'm not malicious towards anybody. Flat earth has changed my life a lot. Two, I am trying to put together flat earth for dummies and would like to have examples easily demonstrated without using science, mathematics, or engineering. For example, I can go to the shore of a sea or ocean and see the horizons with no curvature. Another example would be the corpuscular, crepuscular, corpuscular rays that can be observed almost every day. Do you have anything, list, video, etc., that I could use to gather examples that can be shown easily to everyone. I will do this in French since the subject here is barely touched and very much looked at as a bunch of BS, of course. Thank you for all your work you do and have done to progress with this subject. I am 61 years old and hope that before I am gone, the globe will be a laughable subject. And that's from Thierry Gautier. I think I pronounced that right. G-A-U-T-I-E-R. I do not know much French. This one's called Flat Earth Clothing Line. Mark, hey there, I have a business proposal. Uh-oh. That you might be interested in. I recently started a Flat Earth Clothing Line to spread the truth about our reality and wake people up. I'm looking for leaders in the Flat Earth community to promote the concept and become partners. If every one of us wore Flat Earth shirts, the message could spread even farther than it currently is, and the shirts could open up opportunities to share the, share the message and meet our awakened individuals. Take a look at our line of products here, facebook.com. It's called Flat Earth Clothing Company. That's from Vince. Thank you, Vince. You guys should go to Facebook. Check that out. Hopefully, he's still doing it. This one's called Think Outside the Box. Mark, hello, my name is Joe. I listen to your YouTube thing on Flat Earth and I've been reading and searching the web for different theories and I'm very interested in what you said. Would love to learn more. Thanks. Uh, and I will send him a link. Hopefully he knows more already. But I will send him a link to the Flat Earth shortlist for new people. Hey, you guys, I mean, that's that's the one I recommend to everybody at this point. And it's, I think, I don't even know if I even have a video on there anymore. It's it's mostly just a, a, a big collection of introductory guides to Flat Earth from different people ranging from five minutes to two hours. And it's well worth anybody's time. This one's called... Uh, this is from Sophia. Sophia Smallstorm. I'd like to tell you about my friend from NASA. That's what it's called. Hi, Mark. You and I spoke a couple times on the phone when I woke up to Flat Earth two years ago. I was going to do a podcast with you, but I felt I needed to learn more, and there continues to be more to learn. Anyway, a friend of mine who just retired from NASA is now looking into Flat Earth very seriously. He wrote to me a year ago to say he was learning, leaning in that direction, having watched a few videos and done a little bit of probing but that he is fully retired. He was a researcher at NASA and then moved to the environmental department. He is spending a lot of time asking questions and doing calculations hours a day. He has moved more towards the middle than he was a year ago, not fully believing the earth is flat, but this isn't a bad thing. I would like to introduce the two of you. 
and she lists his name. And would you like to meet researcher at NASA? Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. I, I again, sorry, this take, took so long for me to get to, but all right, moving on. This one, let's see. Um, sorry, just a couple. I, I glance through the emails first, and then I kind of take a second look at them here. This one's called Effie Questions. Hello, Mark. How are you? I am Victor from Portugal. I step upon the Flat Earth videos for almost 10 months now. Eric Debay, ODD, Jaronism, yours, etc. After viewing a lot of videos and research, a lot of information from time to time, specifically on YouTube, I can honestly say that you and the people that post the videos and the same topic basis information are changing the way of some, that some people think if they are eager enough and open-minded enough to think in a different way. In my case, it certainly raised a lot of questions, not only about the moon landing, but also about the flat earth theory. It is interesting to see how the media and how the education system plays such an important role in the way people think and how our mind works to the point that we have such a hard time to think of these questions in different perspectives and we struggle to challenge the truth or not behind these topics. Research, I'm sorry, regarding the flat earth theory is my biggest concern is about Antarctica, and this is why I'm writing to email to you. If Antarctica surrounds the entire flat disk, covering a huge massive distance, how come no one had the curiosity to explore behind the wall in a different place, different from the globe map in the South Pole? And how come there is nothing documented? Video pictures, how come no one has gone out that far and registered? Uh, because the first people, you gotta remember, the first people that were exploring Antarctica were the governments. Uh, most notably the United States and the Soviet Union. So once they figured it out, they made sure that everybody else had to go through a massive permit system, a massive set of applications that had to be validated by different countries. So, and not only that, you, you, corporations aren't allowed to set up there. That slows things down. They've slowed down the process so much that subliminally nobody wants to do anything in Antarctica because it's just a hassle. So, and explorers, nope, same sort of thing. Uh, he goes, I know it is a very isolated place and the general public does not have the resources to go there. I know that it is secured by authorities. Okay. Uh, but it's hard for me to see a distance of that huge size get monitored. Well, it can if you have a lot of different countries helping. What this question, with this question, I do not mean to disrespect or make any kind of judgment. I am simply and honestly curious. No, no, I'm not offended. I think the world needs more people that question the current reality and the current values and standards already in place. That is how we have any kind of real progress and evolution as a species, as part of a society, a country, and the world. Thanks and continue the good work, Vitor. You are very welcome, Vitor. You know what? For being from Portugal, your English is pretty good. This one's called Free Survival Guide. Please, hi, Mark. Thanks to you and a few other YouTubers, I am, now a flat, I am now a flat earther. I never looked into this until a few months ago, and I'm absorbing and I'm learning much as I can. Keep up the great work. Thanks in advance for the survival guide. Regards, Sean. Yep. Anyone wants a free survival guide? It's only two megs. I will shoot it to you in an email. All you have to do is send me an email and say, hey, I want your survival guide. That's it. It's already on my desktop. I just pop it off. This one's called F.E. Rant Videos. Hey, Mark, I watched D. Marble's rant video today uh, about B.O.B., excessive F.E. drama, and the lack of unity in the F.E. community, and a live stream from Dell, Beyond the Imaginary Curve, who was also saying some of the same things. To date, I don't think I have come across a video of you ranting hard. I was just wondering how you keep your emotions in check. I can only assume it is a combination of confidence and patience but I am part of the 90% of truthers below the waterline, and I can't help but think that I would come out swinging. From where it is flat in Canada, Jason, P.S., please send me a copy of the survival guide. Thanks for all you do. Ah, crap. I don't know if I sent him a survival guide. Um, but yeah, it's just confidence and patience. That's all it is. Uh, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm more of a big picture guy. So infighting, that's, that's going to happen. That happens in any industry. I don't care what it is. The, any entertainment industry, the art community, academia, there is always competition. There is always infighting. 
it's it's not just in war and it's just not just because between military forces or the scottish clans it's not it, it happens everywhere it is the spirit of competition competition that makes us human and some people the competition they'll they'll do just about anything to win including look 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 at any political race the mudslinging how many commercials do you see where it says oh yeah john smith is a great politician no they don't they never hype up themselves they always attack the other guy because people just kind of gloss over the happy stuff and we love uh, our human beings are really drawn to drama and conflict but i digress we have time for more let's do more this one's called flat earther sadness and canada wow okay please read on show hey mark hope you are well it's mike allen from canada i have been having trouble talking with family about flat earth my godfather thinks i have manic depression no one will listen to me i am so hurt by my godfather's words i'm not sure what to do at this point i'm having trouble sleeping some nights and tears in the daytime come and go i sure hope i can progress from this and become happy again i am always a happy guy my father is also hard to talk to about this I am in a bad situation. All of my family have education or educators. My dad was a politician. It makes it hard to have any confidence in myself because I only, uh, I'm only at grade 12. At this point, I'm not asking anything from you just to put this email on the radio show. Thanks again for what you do for Flat Earthers. You are a great man. Wish you well and the best of everything in life. Hope you can respond to the email. Thanks, Mike Allen. I shall phone sometime on show. Man, I hope he did at this point. You know what? And, and my kind regards to Jaron. He says, you know what? I'm going to write him back and say that I just read this on the show. And uh, thank you for that. And I know, I know it's hard. Look, I, and you guys or some of you probably already know. I got a message, an email from my cousin. My, uh, She's a couple years older than me. And I've never gotten a bad word from family members because I'm pretty eccentric. She came at me with... with extreme negativity and profanity and she's she and i have never had a bad word between us our entire lives and we're both pushing 50 so how did that happen that's because flat earth is so polarizing so i understand where you're coming from man uh just stay strong stay flat it'll it'll come i mean by now hope you know that email was written quite a while ago there's so many headlines out there about flat earth i would think that your family would take notice this one is called Flat Earth Sand Sculpture. Good morning, Mark. I thought it would be a good idea to throw out the suggestions to have someone do a Flat Earth Sand Sculpture somewhere. Maybe in California or other coastal cities. Maybe a contest to get people interested and get attention, even if it is just the letters or something simple. Tell me what you think. Alma Ortega. I like it. I think it's a great idea. Flat Earth Sand Sculptures. That'd be really, really cool. Why not? Sure. Cool. Or ice sculptures. That'd be neat, too. Oh, we're doing so many different versions of it. Uh, let's see here. Flat Earth. This one's called Flat Earth and No Globe. Mark, my name is Judy, and I just subscribed to Flat Earth Clues under a pseudonym. Oh, wait. I already read this one. She sent this one twice. Every once in a while, someone will do that. They'll, they'll send it one day, and they'll send it a couple days later. And I caught it just at the beginning. This one's called... Hello, regarding your great video under the dome. Hi, Mr. Sergeant. How are you? I saw your video under the dome. So fascinating. This is such a great video. There are so many things over the years I've thought of and had concerns of, and my goodness, you've touched on them so much. I've had so many questions and concerns over the years, and funny, one thing is yes, even I had a globe when I was young. These things have been imprinted into our brains our whole life. And it's interesting that, yes, us as humans, we ask questions, unlike animals who just accept something for what it is. I've always envisioned us as something like the film The Matrix, maybe not exact, but me being very observant, I see so many people just wandering the planet, living their lives without a care in their eyes or brain. Uh, a saying I came up with when I was very young was, people only see as far as their eyes can see. I've been saying this my whole life. It's just something that I know so many don't seem inquisitive on anything. And I think it's spectacular as far as the moon landing or Mars, etc. Well, if it was the case, gosh, we should be going there a lot. And not just the light side of it, but the other side. No one has explained why we don't see the other side. And it's supposedly our neighbor. 
we should be having trips back and forth to it. No one seems to care. This is something that is supposed to be amazing. Leaving our planet, going to another one, yet when all the media hype dies down, people seem to not care. It's all circles. It all circles the narrative. Well, I've kept you long enough. Thank you. I just love everything you said, and I wish I could speak with you. That would be amazing. Thanks again, Miss Dara Valentine. Thank you, Dara. I've never known anyone named Dara. That's very interesting. This one's called Flat Earth and Lands Beyond the Poles. Hi, Mark. I've been watching your videos and others on Flat Earth. Just wanted to know your thoughts on Admiral Byrd's comments of more land beyond the South Pole. Uh, he knew. Plain and simple. I, I think he knew. Or he, he, he let... When he said it in 1954, I think he had an inkling of what, was, what he was going to run into. And then when he finally found it, well, that's when he died unfortunately. But he lived a full life. In fact, a more full life than just about anybody I know. Uh, he says, uh, and also the idea of land continuity as described by Amadeo Gianni, Giannini in Land Beyond the Poles. Yep, same sort of thing. If I've addressed this elsewhere in your videos, please advise. Thank you, Mario. Um, better off just typing that in right now or soon. Type in Flat Earth and then one of those topics. And there's a whole bunch of people that have addressed it. You know, I don't need to be redundant on that case. Oh, let's see here. This one's called Spacewalk 360. Russia Today re releases first ever panoramic video of abandoned outer space. Mark, this link is straight from Russia Today. So cheesy. I've never seen so much distortion in a camera lens. And Earth is a rectangle. And they aren't high enough uh, to see the entire globe. Desperate times call for desperate me uh, measures. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And when they cross Florida... If I'm not mistaken, when you tried to match up with when they were crossing Florida, how it looked, the perspective of it looked like if you if you matched it up on Google Earth and you screenshot it and overlaid it, it showed it at about 1,600 miles, but the ISS is supposedly at 400 miles. So what exactly are we seeing there? Uh, you know, it's four times the distance, or is it not four times the distance? Because one of those things would be lying. Either Google Earth is completely wrong, or the ISS is completely wrong, and I think actually both are. Uh, but yeah, the Russia Today thing didn't get any traction whatsoever. This one's called Flat Earth Meetup GOA. Hey Mark, thanks for posting the video for the Flat Earth Meetup in Dubai. Not a lot of guys showed up, but around 10 of us meet. That's still pretty good for Dubai, uh, which was decent for a first meetup. We almost got Chris Fade to come, the radio jockey from Dubai that you had a discussion with. I want to set up a meeting in GOA India as well this October as I will be there and would appreciate it if you could post a meetup uh, video for GOA. Details are as follows. Uh, did I do one for that? Because October 1st can't... Wait. This well, as well this October. It was... Oh boy, it was October 28th. Eh, crap. I don't think I did it. For It was from Kenneth. Sorry, Kenneth. Um, sorry, I missed that one. Again, I there's some things I don't... Uh, uh, that one's for the Flat Earth Tickets... This one's called Check This Out. I will get it. We'll, we'll try to end on a happy one. I don't think this is one of them. Though. Mark, Elon Musk wants to use the same rocket that he said he will send people to Mars with, which won't happen, to fly people around the world to get anywhere in 30 minutes from a landing pad out to sea where people will have to take a boat to and cost the same as an economy-type flight and start building in six to nine months. What do you think about this? I think that pretty much at this point, they're letting Elon Musk just create his own headlines. And... He's just letting his imagination go. Everything, everything that he says now, he's just pulling out of his butt. And, and they're horrible headlines. They're just they're ridiculous. I mean, to say that, yeah, you can do a 30-minute ultrasonic flight and it's going to cost the same amount as an economy ticket. Uh-huh. Yeah, that'll happen. Or the, but remember, don't forget, he says that he's going to send tourists around the moon in, what, six months? And we still don't, name, don't know the name of the tourists, the pilots, the booster rocket, the capsule, any of the manufacturers. There's no testing. It's never, ever, ever going to happen. It's just, a, it's just a fake headline that's doing nothing. Nobody's doing anything with the space programs. And Elon Musk, thank God it's not a public company. Because if it was, he would have been found out a long time ago. All right, let's see if we can find something... Something positive to end on. Let's do something, you know, kind of light. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Movement. I would love to, I would love to m be involved. And he actually said me involved. Hi, Mark. I am writing this email to let you know how much I enjoy your videos. 
I absolutely believe that we have been lied to and manipulated. What amazes me is how so many people refuse to do their own investigation. At the current moment, my concern is how they are brainwashing our children in schools. I'm working on finding other parents to start a think tank about how to address these issues. I am definitely looking to be part of this movement. I would love to be part of your team. Please let me know if there's any way I can help you and Patricia. And again, thank you for so much for all the information and hard work. Best regards, Galena. Galena, whatever you're good at, whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you should be doing. And what, let's, let's end on this email. Again, Flat Earth is a university. Some people call it a religion. Some people call it a, a, a drug deal. Actually, I'm the one that really calls it the other things. But it's, it's a university, which means once you get into the Flat Earth, you can specialize in just about anything you want. So if you like doing tests, whether they be air tests or water tests or other scientific uh, ground tests, street activism, um, doing meetups, helping with conferences, uh, car activism, take, take your pick. There's so many different, bashing NASA, doing, doing cool hangouts. Whatever you're good at and you like doing, you can apply it to Flat Earth. If that means spreading the word and you're comfortable with it, go ahead. If it means making videos, uh, whatever you can see yourself, envisioning yourself doing that is tied to flat earth, that you have no negative, there's no negative side effects for you. That's what you should be doing uh, because everyone's different. Uh, again, I couldn't do street activism. I would have be tough pressed. I don't even like really doing hangouts at least on my own. I've never actually done a hangout on my own. Um, I interview some people, but some people are better at interviewing than others. So that's, that's why I recommend anyone in the Flat Earth University, once you get in, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot, last but not least, advanced maps. If you're into working on a new Flat Earth map, by all means, there, there are no wrong answers. There are no wrong fields in Flat Earth right now. In fact, I don't even know of a negative faction of Flat Earth. It's not like we have an extreme faction that goes out and blows up post offices. That doesn't happen. Everything is very, very positive, including the music. If you like writing music, what, what is wrong with creating a Flat Earth song? We've got 200 tracks so far covering span of, of the better part of three years. I'm sorry, two years. 2015, 2016, no, oh, three years. Well, not quite three years yet. So whatever it is you like doing, if you want to be a part of Flat Earth, envision yourself doing it What and put yourself out there a little bit. doesn't mean you have to use your real name, but that's, that's why I suggest at this point. On that note, let's wrap this one up. Remember, you can email me your questions at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. I will try to read them here. And until then, well, until the next time anyway, stay flat.